This episode is sponsored by the Paper Trails Greeting Company. Owners near and far, hear ye, hear ye. There's an amazing company that's dedicated to celebrating and encouraging every runner that laces up a pair of running shoes, and it's called the Paper Trails Greeting Company. This company offers something that's hard to replicate in a text message, and that is a physical, innovative, and genuine note of kindness that supports and celebrates every runner. The motto of the company is that every runner belongs, and each card proves that. The cards preach community among all runners, and there's a card for each season of a runner's journey. If you've run a new personal best, there's a card that celebrates that. If you suffered an injury, there's a card that lets you know that someone is thinking of you and that you'll come back even stronger. There's even a card that celebrates your significant running other. For me personally, I never felt like a runner. But then I stumbled across the Paper Trails Greeting Company and it inspired me to pick up running again. And eventually, it made me feel like I was a part of the running community. Go on their website, papertrailsgreetingco.com and check out their incredible selection of cards. Use the code lactic acid in all caps for 15% off your order. They also have inspirational stickers and PDF printouts, so be sure to check those out as well. Then follow them on their social media page on Instagram, Paper Trails Greeting Co., as well on Facebook. And always remember to celebrate every runner and that every runner belongs. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, saints and anks, and welcome to the Lactic Acid Podcast. I am your host, Dominique Smith, and I am so, 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 so pumped to introduce today's guest to you. And it's funny, I just forgot that I forgot to say that Lactic Acid is where the takes are fresh, the ideas are are ripe, and that makes us the best in the bunch. I was just so excited to introduce the guest to you, and he is none other than my friend, the GOAT of photographers. We have so many different nicknames for him in our uh, little group chat, our Magic Booths chat, but uh, we're going to stick with his government name, government name, Mr. Johnny Zhang. What's going on, man? I appreciate hey. you coming on the show. Hey, thank you, Dominique. Uh, I like the name of the show, Lactic Acid. Uh, this is exactly what I'm feeling now, coming back from practice earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, this is how this is how big time Johnny is. Johnny was at the Armory uh, taking pictures. You, were you taking pictures or were you running? I was actually working out, doing uh, 400 repeats in what? the Armory. Yeah. You're going to see why that's necessary because Johnny is like Spider-Man when it comes to getting the perfect shot. Yeah, Johnny took time out of his busy schedule, taking pictures, incredible pictures, that is. Um, and then when it did 400 repeats for whatever reason, that sounds painful. That is definitely lactic acid at its fullest uh, to come join me on the show. So, Johnny, listen, man, I got to ask you what I ask everyone when they come on the show, and I want you to answer to the best of your ability. All right, cool. If you had to pick a superhero to describe yourself as a photographer, who are you rolling with? Oh, man. <laughs> superhero. I think, um, I think what, when you, what you said from the beginning, that, that makes sense. Spider-Man, right? Like, you know, trying to um, chase the runners, uh, climb up on little obstacles. Izzy, I've climbed up on a lamppost. You know, uh, try to climb up anything that won't get me arrested. Uh, so, you know, if, if my hands can stick on a wall, I will probably be like Spider Man, just hanging off the side of a wall. He's not lying. Like, dude's climbed up on trees to get pictures. And it's so funny when you're like, oh, I'm going to do 400 repeats. Johnny will go take pictures of runners, but like outrun them to get the perfect shots. I'm like, what are you? I guess you have to stay in shape to get the perfect shot and everything, especially the way you've done it. But no, nah, Johnny is there's there's a lot of great photographers out there. Jeff Cohen, uh, Courtney White, definitely incredible photographers in the track and field community. In my humble opinion, there is nobody in the game better than Johnny. Johnny is is like on oh another God. level when it comes to not just taking pictures, but taking, like getting the perfect shot, getting great emotion, everything about it. Got a chance to work with Johnny this summer. Still the craziest picture of Noel Lyles that I've ever seen. 
um, as he was crossing the finish line. I think he ran uh, 1952 or something like that um, at pre and Johnny was there. Um, but I want to, before we get into your, um, you know, about you as a photographer, how you started and, and stuff like that, I have to ask, you almost got in, well, you did kind of get in trouble for it. But <laughs> yes, at, at pre, it was a Friday night. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Johnny, after the race, took a selfie um, <laughs> with uh, Safan Hassan. You got to, you have to go into that, go in detail. What went, in, I've never seen that before. I've never known a photographer to do that. It was epic, but what went into that, man? It, because the picture was epic. I mean, I, I think I got caught up in a moment. Uh, and it was for that race, I remember Stefan was going for the uh, 5K world record. Yeah. Uh, you know, she, she missed it by a little bit. Um, but she had a lot of fans there. And after the race, and I think it was the last race of the night. So there was no more races going on. And she had a lot of fans. And they were all by the finish line, hugging her, uh, doing selfies. Um, you know, they, they're... Um, the, some parents gave Safan like the baby to hold and I do like a group family photo and I'm literally just standing around I'm like okay you know this is pretty cool like, I've never seen fans so excited about about a, an, an athlete and she was cool about it she was doing selfies with them like and I was like, oh wow this is pretty interesting so I, I figured let me just hang around for a little bit there's no more races everybody left and let me just hang around and, and maybe I can find something interesting going on but then you know it just more and more fans came on. It got so much hype. Everyone was yelling and screaming. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Let me just run in there and get a selfie myself. <laughs> I was just so caught up in a moment and excitement. I was like, okay, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to post that on my social media account when I like for lactic acid, when I promote the show. It was epic. And like, <laughs> were you surprised when they were like, uh, Tell them not to do that anymore. Don't. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. I, it, it never occurred to me that I shouldn't really be doing something like that. Um, and <laughs> even when I did it, I'm like, yeah, this, you know, it, something feels a little bit off. But I, I didn't think too much about it until, you know, I got pulled over on the side like an hour later. And, you know, I got a text saying that, hey, you know, uh, somebody, some photographer took selfies. And I'm like, oh, wait. I just, then I started thinking, wait, who, what, what photographer no. took selfies? <laughs> Hey man. And then I realized slowly, <laughs> like, oh, I get like, yeah, they're talking about you <laughs> and everything. Oh man. Listen, it was definitely worth it. Like the, even just not even the selfie, but just the pictures that you got in the moment were epic because she genuinely, and that was such an incredible race because she, she missed it, but you know, she ran like 42 events at the Olympics, you know, mm -hmm. and to come yeah. back to try to, you know, get the, you know, world record was incredible. So the fact that she was still full of joy and just so excited, you know, and being there in person. And I don't know, it was just incredible, but no, I had to start off with that moment because that was, <laughs> that was like epic and everything. How did you get into photography? Because that wasn't what you initially wanted to do, but now you're one of the best photographers in the world, especially when it comes oh. to sport and track and field. So how did you get into the game? Oh my God. I, you know, they, Thank you for thinking so highly of me, but you know, I, I don't think I'm there yet. Um, uh, I mean, it's a pretty long story, but let me see if I can show this for you. Um, I got into photography more or less by accident in a way. So I've worked in the financial industry um, in the bank for about 13 years. My last years, my last four or five years at the bank, I was, I was a private banker, um, like a relationship manager. And then, um, you know, having worked at a bank for 13 plus years, I just didn't really like the politics. And I feel like, you know, I just want to do something on my own. And I didn't want to retire, you know, thinking that I never tried doing anything on my own. So uh, two to three years before I quit, I was just saving a lot of money. And I figured, you know, if I want to do something on my own, I might not have income for a couple of years. So let me save up a, a lot so that I don't have to worry about, you know, feeding myself, you know, my, my, my apartment, et cetera, for a couple of years. And let me just build whatever it is I'm building up. So 
Initially, I quit. Uh, I was a computer science major, so I, I quit my job to try to build an app, and, and a uh, Apple iOS uh, app. And during that time, uh, my girlfriend got me a camera on my 40th birthday. Um, yeah, actually, she asked me like, what uh, what do I want from for my big big four birthday? And you know, initially I said you know I didn't really want anything, but she you know persisted, and I was like, okay, you know what? Let me just get this camera that I've been thinking about. That you know it'll be pretty fun to like maybe just take some pictures as a hobby. And this is after I quit my job already, and I've already got into software development. I've I've started uh, doing it for for a month or so, and I was just taking pictures for fun. Uh, I'm part of a track team in New York City. So uh, I would go to Central Park and you know this is right before the pandemic. So this race, two, three races every week uh, in Central Park. So I'll just take my camera, go out there, take pictures of my friends and you know just give it to them to post. Um, and that's how I got started. And, um, and when I decided to do photography full time, uh, I went to the Olympic trials qualified in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, 2020. And I went there to cheer on for a couple of friends who was running the Olymp the Olympic trials for the marathon. Um, I took a whole bunch of photos and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Like, this is really fun. Like, you know, I run myself. I know what it feels like to run and, you know, just capturing the moments, telling those stories. I was like, oh, wow, like, this is really kind of very interesting. And at that point I had to make a decision, right? Cause I was doing software development on my own and I was also doing photography and I'm like, you know, there's really only like 24 hours in a day and I can only allocate so much to one or the other. And then I decided that, um, you know, since I quit my job, you know, after working in, in the bank for 13 plus years, I'm not gonna quit my job just to kind of do something that I may not necessarily really, really love. And I felt, felt like I love photography a lot more. Like I just fell in love with it. So I just took a big gamble and I just kind of went with that. Uh, and that's how it got started. The craziest thing is John is like 42 years old, but you look like 20. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, still, when you told me that in Oregon, I was like, that man is lying. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, 42, 42 this year. Yeah, um, it's the Asian genes. The Asian <laughs> hey, man, listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not hating on it at all. Man. Definitely not at all. I would say the risk was definitely worth the reward. How do you love it now? Like, I don't want to say how do you love it, but what is it about taking pictures, capturing big moments, great moments that brings you so much joy? Um, well, I think, I think the big thing is I'm a runner and I can relate in many ways. Well, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm not as fast as the elites, but you know, in many ways I can relate to how they feel when they're running, when they're training at a race, et cetera. You know, if they're doing if they're doing a track race, I know how they feel for trying to kick in the last, you know, last lap or the last mile in a marathon, or you know, when they're blowing up, et cetera. So I kind of know how that feels. And what brings me joy is um to be able to capture that moment, right? So this is still obviously a work in progress, but to capture the moment of pain, of joy in a still moment, and you kind of kind of look back at it and and look at it and get the same feeling at least that's my goal right in the long term is you know when i take a picture i want to kind of get the feeling that i saw or at least when i'm sitting there and i can capture that and so when i look at the picture a, a week from now i will get that similar feeling and just that you know just looking through it it's like oh wow like i actually did that that's pretty cool that's pretty cool has it surprised you about how you've taken off since you started a couple of years ago i mean you're one of the premier you know sport photographers or photographers in sport um people you know use your photos all the time we were just talking you were on cbs news recently because you got incredible pictures of sarah hall and um the era, name era the yeah. yes forget me she is that was just an incredible race and she is a truly inspirational really happy uh for what she was able to accomplish you know gosh abby cooper uh Noah Lyles, you know, Son, you yeah. captured so many incredible moments. Carrie Richardson, um, you were you've captured some incredible pictures of her and some big time meeks. Has it surprised you, you know, how fast you've taken off and how well you've done for yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. Well, first of all, I mean, you know, I, I want to say I'm a top sports photographer. I, you know, 
just focus on running. Um, and I think that helps a little bit because I, I focus on one sport yeah. and not every sport. So I kind of, uh, you know, I'm really into the sport. I follow it. So it, that helps a little bit. Uh, but yes, I think I am very surprised to be where I'm at today. I feel like I'm also very lucky, uh, primarily because the pandemic is, was, or is an equalizer, yeah. right? Like when the pandemic happened, nothing was happening. There was no races. And I felt like a lot of the prominent photographers kind of you know, took like a half a year off or a year off. And because no one was out there, and there was some virtual races uh, hosted by Trials and Miles. And, you know, that kind of really got me started. And um, I have a lot of friends in New York who ran those virtual races. And, you know, I was just out there constantly, like, just taking pictures because that's all I was doing. And, um, and I just kept taking it day after day, week after week. And, you know, and because of the pandemic and I was the only one, I mean, there wasn't really much of a choice. Yeah. And, and, and when they started opening up at the end of the year, you know, I kind of caught up or made up a lot of ground with the photographers who's been doing it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, it, it closed that beginners, you know, when you're starting out gap to like, you know, being in it for a while, it closed that gap a little bit. I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm there, but I'm saying that, you know, it closed the gap a lot. I want to talk about and touch on, you will do anything for the perfect shot. Like literally, you know, just about anything. And, and you get the, you know, we were, you helped me with a project with uh, Sonia Richards Ross and uh, Trey Hardy wasn't there. And um, it was me, you and uh, Matthew Parker. And just the shocks that you were able to get, you know, in the inside setting where the lighting wasn't ideal and everything. Uh, <laughs> big credit to Matthew because he was the one that kind of moved things around in that room uh, to get the shot. But like I said, so many incredible runners. Have you been able to forge relationships through photography with some of the people that you take pictures of? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the uh, joys that I get from being a photographer too. Like, you know, I'm not just this stranger on the side, you know, sniping around with, 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 with a zoom lens and whatnot. Like I like my shots. I like to get close to the action. I like to be in the action, you know, in, in order to capture the raw moment, or the feeling like you have to be very close to the action. Um, and in order to get close, I mean, you kind of have to talk to them. Plus, you know, in my prior career, I was a relationship manager. So it is, it's fine for me to kind of get to know the athlete, know them, you know, so that everyone's comfortable, right? Like, you know, you, you don't want me to take pictures of you and then you don't really know me and you're like feeling a little weird because I'm kind of following you around more or less. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, like I've gotten to know that like one of the biggest perks for me is that I've gotten to know a lot of these professional athletes, you know, got to talk to them, um, have a lot of the personal contacts and, you know, just kind of following up, like more or less have become friends in, in a way, you know, not, not a friends I hang out with, but, you know, just kind of acquaintances that people that I would care about and follow them on the races and follow the career a little bit. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, it is a friendship because you've captured some of the biggest moments of their careers. And in some respects, you know, some of the biggest moments of their lives, uh, you know, you work so hard. The Olympics only come around every four years. World championships, obviously, you know, they're more frequent. And marathons are, you know, consistent, but they're so difficult because they're so demanding, uh, you know, on your body and the training that goes into that. And so I was going to ask one question. My mind went somewhere else, which is why I asked that question. But I wanted to talk about your willingness again, to do anything for a shot, including climb up a light pole, <laughs> uh, you know, going up, uh, you know, trees, running in front of runners and just like give, essentially giving up your body because you were like a soccer player from what I saw, like sitting up in the stands of Eugene, you're like, okay, there's Johnny. Okay. Where is he's like over there. And you're like slipping and sliding across the field and everything to get just the perfect angles. But you look at the finished product and it's like, Oh my goodness gracious. This is incredible. I don't want to say why, but what, what's the mentality? <laughs> okay. Why? <It's> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like, if you just stand around, I mean, in a corner, right? Like, it doesn't matter anywhere. You can stand on top of a light pole. You take one shot. Okay, that's it. That's just one shot. Either you, if you miss it, 
you kind of, you know, you, you might try to get another runner after that, but it's just one shot. If you take five, if you publish five pictures from that same position from a light, from top of a light pole, I mean, it gets really boring, right? Like, yeah. this is like, like art, right? Like you want variety, you want different, you want to make it interesting, right? I want to create a set of images to kind of tell the story for a race and I can't just sit in one place. So I do a variety of things. So if, I, if I'm chasing a runner, and I want to get, cause that's because I want to get close. But if you get close, I mean, they come by, they come by like this. You get like half a second to shoot it. And then it's like, okay, you don't know. Sometimes like, I don't have time to look at my camera. And sometimes I don't know if I get it, if I got it or not. So just as a precaution, I just cheat, I just sprint after them. Okay. <laughs> just trying to get that, you know, just sometimes I'm like, maybe I didn't get it. Let me just chase after them and let me get another shot. Or, or sometimes depending on the environment, I might see I'm originally in one spot and then something happens down the street or somewhere. And I'm like, oh, wow, that might be a better shot. And I'm like, okay, I just got a gun down there and try to get this one. Or, you know, um, yeah. So you get a different variety of shots. So this is when you, when, when you put everything together and you want to, you know, make a post or tell a story about any, about the whole race, about one runner or the entire event. You have a variety of shots that kind of look interesting because if you just sit there and just shoot, uh, I mean, you get like maybe two, three different shots of every runner coming through. So, you know, for me, that's kind of boring. Um, <laughs> and, and also like, you know, running up light poles and everything like, <laughs> so I'll tell you a very interesting story, right? So like, this is like live and learn, right? So there was a race um, in the Brooklyn mile. I think I would say this past summer okay. uh, at, at the finish. So uh, the, there was, the, there was a, the men's elite team was starting. So I was like, okay, I saw this really cool light pole near the finish. It's a very cr narrow finish. So I was like, okay, you know, if, if, if there's a couple of runners coming through, like you can't really see them. So I want to get a higher up angle down so I can see like the pack coming through like really quick. So I saw this light pole, I climb up there, like before the race started. I mean, this is like a mile race, like a four minute freaking mile race. So I was thinking, okay, I got like five, six minutes. Let me climb up, let me just scope around, let me get the right lens and, and let me just wait. <laughs> the race starts, the cop comes over and they're like, yo, you gotta get down there. I'm like, come on, like the race just started. Just give me three minutes. They're like, no, you gotta come down right now. They're looking at me and I'm like, okay, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm just going to come down because they might just like arrest me, right? Like, you know, for one shot, I might not be oh, worth man. going to jail. So I had to climb down. And you know what? There's four of them neck to neck coming through that funnel. It was at the last 0.1 mile left right before the finish. And I was just so upset because that shot would have been pretty freaking cool. And now <laughs> I've learned. It's like, okay, you know what? You climb up the light pole when they're about to come. Don't climb up there like 10 minutes before the race. Climb up. So this way, even if the cops come, you just take a shot and then you come down and you're done. <laughs> and you can be taking shots as you're coming down. Right. Or whatever. <laughs> or you could be able to take your time. You know, you're trying to pretend like you're trying to find your footing. But man, you know, like I, they, they were staring at me and I'm like, okay, this is not happening. That um, is, that's, that's, <laughs> that is, but, um, Crazy. But also another thing is, uh, you know, it's just finding my own, your own voice, right? Like, you know, like you look at running pictures all the time, right? Like, you know, from every running magazine, our online outlet, other prominent photographers, like, you know, like they've, most of the, all of them have their own style. And, you know, you, you don't want to be that one photographer who just sits in the end that just, you know, have that 300 millimeter zoom that just takes that finishing shot all day long. And, you know, so in order to find your own voice, I've, you know, you just got to do something your own way. And for me, I chase up the runners. I climb things. Um, I, you know, bordering legal versus illegal. And um, <laughs> that, that's kind of like, I know that's kind of what I like. And, you know, just having the adrenaline rush too. My yeah. biggest fear is Johnny. We're going to get a call one day. Like, why? Because Johnny's all Johnny in jail. <laughs> he just <laughs> like, he, he went the Curious George route and climbed a tree <laughs> just to get a shot through Central Park or something. Like that. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, I can't, I can't like, that was the question I was going to ask. Like, why didn't you just like wait <laughs> till the last minute? Like to get, but like you said, you live and you learn. It's like, it's, it's trial and error. It's a yep. Wow. yeah so and, like you know like if, if you do like a track race i mean it's a 400 meter loop 400 meter loop for outdoor track right like you know how many different variations can you get right like this infield outfield and the four corners right like you know you after you take 
I mean, and it's a very repetitive gig, right? If you shoot track meets, I mean, it gets pretty boring pretty quick. So, you know, to keep myself motivated and then to kind of keep things interesting, you know, you try different things, you, you know, you just run, you know, you try to get that kick in the last 150 meters. But if you want to get that kick in the last the straightaway, the back straight, I mean, you got to sprint back to the finish if you want to get the finishing shot to like literally sprint. So, you know, so it's just one of those things that, you know, it kind of depend on the story that you want to tell. Some athletes, you know, that they kick at the, the, the back straight. That sometimes you might just want to get that shot. Yeah. And then uh, for marathons, you know, marathons are very difficult, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, depending on the course, the logistics is it sometimes could be a nightmare. Uh, like Boston Marathon is like a freaking nightmare. It's a logistical yeah. nightmare. You can pretty much only get one shot in one spot, you know, and it gets, yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to cover it. So you have to think of very creative ways to kind of get different shots in different places, et cetera. So, um, but yeah, I like, you know, why? I go, just going back to your original question, like why I do it, like, you know, like just, just competition too. Like, you know, you always want to get like the better shot, right? Like you want to get the better shot. Like you see what other people have done and you're like, okay, well, wow, that's pretty cool. How can I do it differently, right? But make it cool. I don't want this straight, you know, head-on shot or side shot i want to do something different so you're always constantly thinking and trying to push the envelope so you mentioned something interesting you said it's always about getting the better shot is there a difference between getting the different shot than getting the better shot if that makes sense yeah actually you know what i i would say i'm maybe i, I meant a different shot right i wouldn't say a better shot because you know like a better shot to me may not be necessarily be a better shot for somebody else like i know the shots that i like that the type of emotion that i that i like to get right just like art if you go to an art museum like you know i see a lot of art hanging up in the museum and i'm like I, I hate this right like i just don't even i'm like I, i'm like who the hell would do this stuff right like but that's me right like but other people would really love it right like it's eye of the beholder yeah. so so for me like like okay so when i say better it means like you know like i might not necessarily like a shot that someone else took but i want to do it differently so maybe to correct what i said is you know I, I would like to get a different shot that maybe i personally like better you'd be a great art critic <laughs> I, would, I would read that call <laughs> for sure oh yeah there's there's some stuff out there and i'm just in museums i'm like jesus christ like <laughs> like how is like who approved this and yeah i'm just looking at it i'm like oh, yeah Awful. I mean, I, yeah I, I went to moma once and i saw this uh, this giant thing of just one just blue it's just like a blue it's just a blue canvas as if like he just poured blue paint on it like that was it That's i'm just it. staring at it and i just like what was it supposed to be? No, I don't know. There's some story, but it's some famous artist, like some stuff. And I, I don't know. Like, I, I was reading the story. I'm just like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, you know, Jesus Christ. I wouldn't even hang this up if you give it to me. Like, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, I would just be, <laughs> I would recycle that thing. I mean, uh, but honestly, you know, this is art, right? So this is, you know, I can't, it, I know I kind of like, I, I I see kind of like the, what I like and, you know, this, there's other different types of art so I'm, I'm not saying that one is necessarily better than the other it's just different you know it's for, for different tastes i can't wait to put this in the show notes johnny goes on a rant <laughs> in an art museum i hope whoever made that blue painting is not listening to the show i think somebody's gonna know what painting i'm talking about yeah it was a pretty big exhibit and uh yeah. you're probably not the his, only person that thought that either so no his, his other stuff was i think it was a, i think it was the guy his other stuff was great but a couple of them were just like I, I don't know i just like oh my, <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh so before they, before they before they end us before we get started <laughs> but, but uh but, but i just want to say that like you know you've mentioned a lot of prominent photographers earlier before the show started like you know jeff cohen or corny white uh, amazing photographers uh i've uh you know i've, I've looked at their work and for um um inspiration uh and i'm like you know how can i do things differently and i just see some of the angles and the way they see things i'm like oh wow like this is very nice and uh but you know obviously i don't want to copy it so i'm like trying to think what they were thinking when they took the shot and i'm like okay you know try to get that emotion and and what they were thinking we yeah. met some really cool photographers you know this summer um 
Tim uh, Healy, I might mess his name. Mm-hmm. I think it's PDX uh, track and field, big time. Like I said, Courtney, uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff is so funny. When I met Jeff, um, I got stung by a, a dog on B. Um, I, I, heard, I heard about that. I didn't see it. Yeah. No, you you were off. Ta- you were off editing pictures, actually. And I was working with Professor uh, Laurie Shantz, who is like the goat um, when it comes to the profession of journalism. But yeah, and so he was like, "Oh, that's a pretty bad sting. I hope you're okay." And I was like, "Oh, I'm with my left hand. I'm like, I'm Dominic. Oh, I'm Jeff Cohen." I was like, "Oh, snap! That's like that's Jeff and everything." So uh, definitely, man. Like I said, you definitely fit right in because the things that you do are so unique and you know different and it there are things that no one's seen um and arguably no one's thought of like I would never think to climb up a light post (laughs) and everything (laughs) you know like you or even that that chain of thought to do that to get a different shot and everything like that so it really speaks to your creative mind and so how did you get that you know creativity especially like you said you, you you said it you know you want to get different shots. You want to, um, you know, be different than everyone else. But that is quick thinking creativity. That's fast thinking. Do you think your time as a banker kind of went into that? Or is that something that you've always had? I think that's something I've always innately have. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a uh, Asian family and, uh, you know, being an artist, a photographer is like unheard of, like, you know, obviously you no know, i mean the, the stereotype is pretty true right like they want you to be a banker a doctor a lawyer and whatnot so you know you don't come home and be like hey mom or dad hey i want to be you know i want to be a photographer oh i want to paint like you know you get smacked right in the head like you know what are you talking about <laughs> like, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's true like uh what well, there's a side topic but quickly like i was in a chess club club in middle school and i remember coming home because the school ends at three, so the chess club is from like four to five. And I remember my dad was like, "What do you come home at five? You know, yeah, I'm playing chess." He's like, "What are you doing playing chess?" So I don't know. He's like, "What's that gonna do for you?" Like, no, 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 no more chess club. I'm like, okay, like that was it. Like that was, <laughs> that was how it was growing up in the Asian family. Yeah. So I remember in Navy because in, in elementary school, uh, for Chinese New Year, we uh, had to put like a collage of something together. Like we got glue, we got some colorful stuff. I don't remember, like, but we put something together and I remember like, you know, I was just putting my own collage thing, you know, that says Chinese New Year with some Chinese characters on it. And, and then the class voted on who had the best one. And, you know, I actually, they actually voted on my little canvas thing, like as the best one of, out of the whole class of like 25 or 30. And I was like, oh, wow, like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I remember, and that was in elementary school. I remember in junior high, um, I took some art class, like painting. I had actually a paint, like actual paint. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is cool. But you know, I took it for like one semester, I think. And then you know, I never thought about it because I'm like, you know, I'm not going to be a painter. Like, I'm going to be like a computer science scientist or whatever. Like, <laughs> so, so, you know, so I kind of never really thought about that. And, you know, going moving forward in my life is all about making money. It's all about like, how do you, make money and you know I took the uh, I graduated with computer science but in 2000 2000 like 2001 I think was it I, I don't even remember anymore it's so long ago but I, I remember graduating and like the um, the financial industry was like on a boom so I took like the route of like easiest money so I went into doing mortgages before the financial crisis in 2007 so I was like a big time mortgage broker for like three, four years, I like selling all sorts of mortgages and, and obviously it collapsed, but <laughs> uh, so <laughs> but I did that. So, you know, and then, <laughs> then I came back <laughs> and, you know, obviously the whole story about the bank 13 years and I got into, I got into photography, but um, I think like part of it innately, like I kind of have like my memory, like when I, when I think about a picture, like I'm thinking about a runner and I see like a 360 view behind, of the runner, front, back, top, down, you know, all the different angles. And I can visually see that in my head, like as a globe, that the runner being, my subject being in the middle and I can just do like a 360 spin around in my head. Like, okay, 
let me try this angle, let me try that angle. And then to your other question about quit thinking about, you know, just, just seeing it, that is just repetition, right? That's just taking like thousands and thousands of photos and you look at it, you're like, okay, this angle is bad. I don't really like this angle. So then you train your eye to just see what you like and you, you know, you keep like fine tuning and fine tuning, fine tuning until you find, okay, like this is the one that I really like. But you keep, that's something that you keep taking photos of, you keep doing it and, you know, eventually it gets easier. It's never like instant. It's just like, it's easier to, okay, this shot would, would make sense. This shot wouldn't make sense. Mm. Oh, that's very interesting. How did you, and so I'll, I'll ask, I have two more and then we'll get to rapid fire and then we'll get you out of here. How did that mentality switch from making money? Cause you, you can make good money as a photographer. Um, you know, obviously, you know, when the rankings and everything, especially, you know, if you have a private, you know, business like yourself and stuff, but from a money, 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 money for the love of money mentality to a photography mentality. And you just explained so eloquently, you know, growing up, that's not something that was smiled upon. How did that mentality change? Because that seems like a, a, a drastic switch from a financial, you know, Scared money doesn't make money, you know, mentality to being a part of something much bigger than yourself behind the lens of a camera. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a term starving artist, right? Like, <laughs> that's pretty much, you know, how I was the first, you know, year. Like, you yeah. know, I wasn't really making anything, right? Um, and, you know, like, just kind of going back a little bit, like, you know, you don't become an artist because it's, it's that because of that mentality, you're going to be a starving artist for a while before you kind of make it big, if you make it big, right? right. So the reason why I took that jump is because of my 13 plus years at the bank. In total, about 15 years professionally in the financial industry. I mean, in the whole financial, but in the in, in the bank, I was there for 13 years. And, you know, it, it's gotten to the point where it became so political and it was like, when I go to work, I feel like I felt like I was going to jail and it was like selling my soul. And you know that you can make the money, but it's like, you, I don't even want to wake up. Like, all I want to do is after work is just go get drunk at a bar. Like, that's all I want to do. Like, just kind of get rid of the stress. Yeah. It's crazy. Or every day it's just like, you know, work, take clients out, go drink. And then you wake up and then it's the next day. And, and it got to the point where, you know, it's like, what am I doing here? Like, 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 you know, will I be happy in, that, in another 20 years if I, when I retire? Like, am I going to be, am I going to look back in my life and say, hey, you know, did you do something that you really like? Did you tr even try, right? And so I didn't, it was a very risky proposition, what I did to kind of completely just cut it off. And I had nothing, like, it wasn't like I negotiated something before I quit. It was just like, I'm quitting and I'm going to give myself two to three years to kind of figure it out, like, what the heck I'm going to do. Right. right. And or at least I had a plan. I'm going to give myself two to three years to develop that plan into a, uh, a, a business plan, like a working business plan. And so, yeah, I just got tired of it. I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to sell my soul anymore. I'm just like, you know, I, I've been there for so long and it's my 40th uh, birthday. And I'm just like, you know, screw this. Like, yeah. you know, if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it when I'm 50. Right. That's for sure. And, you know, it's, it's now or never. It's one of those things. And it's like, you know, I'm, I just jumped off the cliff. I just jumped. We, we were part of the Magic Boost program. I've mentioned it 27 billion times on this show and had uh, members and, you know, hopefully we'll have the whole crew on by the time it's all said and done because everybody brings uh, different, unique and awesome perspectives and they're just amazing people. And so we were, you know, a part of this resurgence in the sport when it, came, when it comes to diversifying the sport in every aspect, whether it's creative design, whether it's graphic design, whether it's photography, videography, podcasting, journalism, this, that, and the other. What did you gain from that? And as a professional photographer in this sport, doing it differently, what do you want your legacy or your stamp to be? Well, and, and so let me scratch that. Better question. What's the change that you wish to see in this sport based on what you've learned 
and what do you want your legacy as a photographer to be? Um, what do I want my legacy to be? I mean, <laughs> I haven't thought that far. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've only been doing this for a few years and, you know, I'm still kind of uh, getting my head wrapped around, like, you know, uh, the storytelling aspect and, uh, you know, like, like photography is a very technical, uh, is a very technical job or career, like just, you know, learning how to use the light and everything. It is very difficult. And I, I'm not even, I'm not close to it yet. You know, there's different um, environments, different people, how to talk to people, how to make people feel comfortable. I mean, a lot of it is personal skills, soft skills. And then the other half is, you know, is technical skills, right? So, I mean, uh, legacy, I mean, I don't know. I, I want to, to, you know, it's not, it's not an image for me, right? So it's not about like one image, right? Like this image competitions and whatnot. It's not about that. I, I, I want to, my, my goal is to just tell a story, like a photo essay, but something meaningful, something impactful, right? Like, you know, I start off with running, you know, I don't know where this is gonna take me in the next five years. Uh, I don't know what I, you know, what I can do, but what I did learn from the Magic Boost program is the magic boost helped me fill this gap that I never had, right? So I never went to art school. I never went to journalism. I, I knew, I know nothing about that. And so the magic boost, it really is a magic boost for me. It was like a college course crammed into like two months. And I've learned all this, like before magic boost, I know nothing about journalism. And I realized now as a photographer, you're a journalist, you're you know, using photographs, but you're a journalist, journalist, which is why you shouldn't be taking selfies with, <laughs> the athletes that you're writing about right <laughs> like that was the main that was i mean hey it's, it's so good people. listen nobody sometimes you got to be the first one to do it man <laughs> so so that i mean i that was really an eye opener for me yeah. journalism yeah. like you know writing and you know you still got to write caption etc uh that helped me like tremendously and you know just having the opportunity to go to oregon to shoot it and having that experience and you know and the whole selfie thing i mean like that just <laughs> encompasses like everything about what not to do right professionally and you know and it was a crash course right it's everything's cramped in two weeks and I, i'm happy that i'm a fast learner <laughs> that would never happen again <laughs> at least where they can see it <laughs> right 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 you're yeah, uh, what, what's the saying? Uh, you, you, you only, you only did something okay. illegal if you get caught. Okay, yeah, okay. Right, right, right. That works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I'm not sure if I answer your question. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, like, I hope you're around in five years. I need somebody to take pictures from my stories and everything. Well, and, so, so going to that, right? So, okay. One thing I want to do is one of, the, one of my goals is to like democratize running photography, right? Like there's a lot of great photography out there, but they sell it for like a tons of money, right? Like if you go to every meet, Getty Images is there, right? They sell it for like a tons of money, oh. right? Like a lot. And you go to get it, he's like, holy crap. Like, but you know, just going to the goal of magic boost to try to bring track and field, you know, more into the mainstream and get it like popular, et cetera. Like, I want to be part of that. I, I want to be part of someone who helped bring track and field to become a little bit more prominent, a little bit, a little bit more mainstream, you know, telling the stories of the athletes you know not just running but the personal side of the story whether it's photographs or you know maybe even film etc like just being part of that and to be like oh wow like you know i really understand like what a professional runner does or do what the, what's the day-to-day -day life like right like a lot of the fee some feedbacks i've gotten is like hey i'm sick of seeing running photos like who is this athlete what do they do besides run like yeah. work out do they drink right <laughs> but some you know you, you don't know so you know people want to see that side of the story uh, to create like this um you know um connection yeah. between the, the viewer and the runner so yeah well listen man like i said the sport needs you and you've definitely been a big addition to it obviously 
you know, if I never write another story again, I definitely will still hope that you will be around capturing all these great moments. It's always so fun to go on your Instagram page and whether it's from a practice or uh, you traveling around the world to different meets and everything like that, capturing, you know, all of these moments and obviously seeing how the athletes truly love you and the work that you do and how you capture something that sometimes and I think that's a before we move on to the final segment I think that's something great that I admire about your photography is that sometimes with your photos you caption something in that picture that maybe the athlete can't express does that make sense like a, a certain emotion because it's when you see it it's just so obvious sometimes you can't put it into words but you do such a great job of you know capturing that in a photo in those prime moments um like i said this marathon is you know a perfect example of that that you know words can't do it justice so i definitely hope you're around man the sport would be like it would be it would suck if you were not here uh capturing everything so Last segment. Okay. It's called Down the Home Stretch. I'm going to ask you a few rapid fire questions, answer them to the best of your ability. If you can't, it's no big deal because nobody answers them that fast anyway, outside of a couple people. Um, you ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should I be nervous? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, get too much off guard. Uh, okay. If there was a food that you had to live with, for the rest of your life yep. and live without for the rest of your life, what would they be? So one to keep, one to get rid of. Wait, how specific do you want it? It could be anything that you want. It could be okay. car, so, it could be, you know, chicken. Rice. Yeah. Rice. So rice. Rice is something I can live on. Okay. 24-7, right? Uh, I, I could eat that every day. Um, growing up, that's what I, that's what I ate anyway. So uh, something I cannot, that can, that I cannot eat. I mean, I mean, not half. Uh, uh, that that's a that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. My least favorite food is probably <laughs> I don't know a sandwich. What kind of sandwich? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, like a ham sandwich, a peanut butter sandwich. I would say ham. I would say ham is probably my least favorite. Okay. Ham. It's, yeah. it's hit or miss for people. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. If you had to pick someone to play your life as a photographer in a movie, what actor would you choose? Oh, uh, crap. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, Johnny Depp? Okay. I can dig it. Yeah. Johnny Depp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. If you had, if, if there was, ah, if there was one person living or dead that you could have dinner with, who would you have dinner with? Who would you choose? Living or dead to have dinner with? Uh, okay. Let's stick with living because dead's weird. If there's one living person that you could have dinner with anybody in the world. Yeah. Would... Uh, Warren Buffett. Really? Okay. Yeah. I can dig it. Dream vacation spot. Uh, Brazil. Okay. Like Rio or? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I actually, I've been there. Uh, it's called Bahia, B-A-H-I-A. Okay. Yeah. That's it's like a small town, a little bit north of Brazil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is the best thing about New York City? The culture. The worst thing about New York City? The homeless. The MTA, the subway, the subway. <laughs> both both are issues. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big issues, big issues. A couple more, uh, two more to be specific. Best yeah. compliment that you've ever received? For my photography? Anything, but we can stick with photography. So, uh, yeah, okay. let's do photography. Okay, so I actually got one recently. I'm just going to... Uh, read it this is on my instagram someone just randomly sent me this uh quote he said uh man you just keep doing the impossible time after time how do you capture that perfect moment 
the essence of an epic race in one snap. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, man, Johnny is the big deal. He is a big deal. Big deal. Last question. Favorite shot, favorite moment that you've ever captured in track and field? Favorite moment? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's really tough. I mean, I don't, I mean. I'll give you, okay, give me two. Give me two, two moments off the top of your head. Oh, man. That is, I, I don't know. If it's, when it comes to the photo, I mean, the favorite, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the most. Uh, or most memorable. How about that? Okay, the most memorable is the one that's on my website now, which is Safan. Okay. <laughs> doing the whole. Yeah. Uh, the fan. I was like, wow. Like, I my camera was almost like in her face like it, it was so close and i got my hand between all the iphones and i was like wow i was like this is pretty crazy right now uh yeah that was probably one of the more memorable moments uh for me and then um and then i don't know and all the other ones i mean the Safan one is good enough because I was. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. Let, let's just stick with one. Let's just stick yeah. with one because I can go just go through a lot of them. There's a lot of like, stories that I have for everyone. Oh my gosh! Yeah, dude, she was yeah. so full of joy and happiness, like in those moments, and I, she was exhausted too, but she was genuinely happy. Johnny, brother, man, I appreciate you so much coming on the show, my friend. Where can people find you? Where can they follow your work? Uh, yeah, my Instagram handle, Jay-Z Snaps, J-Z Zebra, S-N-A-P, and then Z has Snaps. Uh, I only use Instagram, um, so that's the only way to follow me for my most recent work. I have a website, but I update it not as frequently, so it's jayzsnaps.com. Uh, but Instagram is the best place to follow my work and for all my most recent work, and uh, I think this year I'm going to post a little, a lot more. I'm doing a lot more trips to different races, a lot more um, content uh for for the different cities um so that's the plan this year business is booming that's what we love to hear john my friend i appreciate you again that's going to do it for the lactic acid podcast do me a favor like you heard in the intro you can follow us on twitter at lactic acid underscore pod on instagram with at the lactic acid podcast and if you're interested in sponsoring the show please shoot me an email lactic acid podcast at gmail.com would love to work for you would love to bring your brand to this great audience until next time see you later